myself and Mark, you probably know me, I'm Mishnu uh, yeah. your faculty. And, uh, you know, let me just speak more about myself. I uh, have been teaching for quite, quite the past few years for uh, various papers like PM, APM, as well as EE and EEE. Primarily, I am an audit faculty and uh, my professional experience also uh, is within the audit field itself. I, I even currently work as an external auditor in a big four company. So, uh, all right, uh, so let's just uh, start with the introduction. So can you tell me about yourself? <clears throat> so I'm Akamsha Ravindra Zadi. Uh, I stay in Badlapur. I'm a chartered accountant by profession. And I'm uh, currently working. Uh, I've cleared to, I've appeared for uh, SBL uh, recently. I've cleared mm -hmm. SBR and I'll be appearing for uh, AAA in the coming session. Okay. Okay. That's uh, good to know. And have you like bought the course or are you yet? Yeah. To... Yeah. No, I've bought okay. the course. Okay. Okay. That's good to know as well. So will you be attempting the, uh, you know, September session or the December one? The September one. September one, right? Okay. That's good. And I'm pretty sure that you already know, uh, you know, of the updates that are coming up as well. So, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll discuss that once. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me just uh, share the slides. And yeah, uh, and so yeah, this particular session is primarily just to give you an idea as to what the AAA paper is all about, as well as the latest updates and how we are incorporating those updates within the course itself. Uh, I'll just uh, share my slides real quick. Second. <clears throat> and where were you based out of again? Uh, I stay in Badlapur. Tani. And where is it? Uh, which state is it? Uh, Maharashtra. Sorry. Maharashtra. Okay. So that's good. <clears throat> so let me know when the screen is visible. Yeah, it's visible. Mm -hmm. So speaking of uh, all about the AAA session, uh, well, there are a few things that you should know here. One is that it's all about the advanced auditing concept. So it's not just, uh, you know, things that we learn in the AA or since uh, you are from a CA background, I believe that were you ex ex exempted in that or? No, I'm not. Exempted. You attempted it, right? The exam. Okay. Uh, no, actually I, I was exempted. I'm supposed to give only professional mm -hmm. level papers. Okay. okay okay that's uh that's also good to know as well so uh even if you, even if that is the case we have still covered all the you know basic concepts and everything within the course itself so uh there's no assume knowledge uh and uh, assume knowledge is something that you always hear uh when you're referring to study text and everything but you don't have to be, uh, worry about that because that's already included within the course itself and when it comes to triple a uh i would say that triple a is around 60% of what you learn in SBR, the IFR standards, all of those are really necessary when it comes to this particular subject. Uh, and it's like 20% the, uh, you know, what you learn in the AA paper, Audit and Assurance, and the rest of the, uh, you know, 20% is basically some advanced concepts that you learn uh, specific to AAA as well. And speaking of the exam, there are a few uh, really good pointers that you can adopt to uh, structure your answers in a bit more uh, efficient and effective manner. And you can expect a few you know, definite questions within your exams as well. So that's basically just the nature of uh, what AAA is all about, just to give you an introduction. Now, moving on. So the idea behind AAA is that, well, I'll, I'll tell you a brief, I would say, difference between the AA as well as AAA paper. The AA paper is primarily oriented towards, uh, you know, uh, audit staff and audit junior level. So that's basically the idea there. So yeah, I wouldn't say junior, but also supervisor, audit supervisors or uh, audit senior level. That's basically the primary focus uh, there. But when it comes to AAA, they're primarily focused on, uh, the, the knowledge is focused on uh, more towards an audit manager level uh, and yeah, the upper levels as well. So when we take a look at the syllabus, there are, uh, you know, basic stuff along with advanced concepts as well. So I'll just go one by one here. The first part is basically part A, regulatory environment. And this is where you learn all about the uh, 
uh, as to what the audit framework is, as well as the uh, your regulations which govern the audit practice within the industry as well. Second. Secondly, we have part B that is professional and ethical consideration, which is a really important syllabus area because, uh, well, there are you know things that you've learned in various other papers as well, such as professional ethics, uh, which includes the self-interest threat or advocacy threat, etc. All these things are covered here. Plus, more and about that, you will also understand some professional issues as well. And in the exam, uh, professional and ethical issues are quite you know, tested, uh, you know, quite frequently and. Uh, yeah, it's usually 80 to 90 percent of the time it, it will be tested in the exam. <clears throat> and then we have part C that is quality management. And this is a small syllabus area, I would say. It's all about uh, the uh, qualitative aspects uh, or the, the uh, you know, uh, the service that we provide. How, how can we improve the quality there? Or is there any quality issues? We should identify those issues, how to improve them, etc. All these things come under part C. And we have a new standard introduced within the quality management syllabus area as well, which is ISA 220. Uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of this. And uh, there are also several other standards uh, that has come up within the new syllabus area as well, which includes ISQ M1 and ISQ M2. And this is something that uh, you know we're planning to discuss in live sessions, as well as you will also be provided with a, a recorded video regarding some sessions as well. That's yet to be decided. But uh, at the end of the day, or at the time of the exam, you will be, uh, you know, uh, we will let you, we will guide you through as to what these updates are, and uh, you know, we will also be providing you with the updated questions as well. <clears throat> then we have Part D, which is planning and conducting an audit of historical financial information, which is primarily focused on, uh, you know, the audit practice, entire audit process itself, from planning to the uh, execution phase. That's basically as to what the syllabus area focuses on. Then we have part C, which is completion, review, and reporting. It again, it's, it focuses on statutory audits. So that's basically our primary focus here, external audit. And, uh, you know, a minor, uh, uh, there are minor topics in relation to internal audits as well. And finally, we, uh, an additional topic that we, oh, sorry, an additional syllabus area that we have is part F, other assignments. Now, other assignments re are related to review engagements rather than, uh, you know, the uh, external audit function itself. So when it comes to audit, we have, uh, we conduct primarily, we conduct the statutory audits of financial statements, which includes, uh, you know, planning the audit, uh, executing procedures, et cetera. But more than about that, audit firms do provide, uh, you know, additional assignments like just a review engagement. They just, uh, you know, review some aspects of the financial statement, or they may take a look at the controls, et cetera. Other uh, assignments can include various uh, such services like uh, reviewing the perspective financial information. Prospective financial informations are basically, you know, futuristic figures uh, created by the management. We just, you know, take a look at as to whether uh, these, uh, the, the, it has been accurately, uh, let's say, prepared or are there any other issues with it? Do they provide, a, provide the honest view of what's happening, et cetera? And then there are uh, aspects such as due diligence reviews, as well as forensic audit. And uh, uh, there was one more, I believe. Yeah, a review. Yeah, there are several other, not just one, but uh, there are uh, like review of uh, performance indicators, KPIs, and things like that. And uh, there's a new, newly added aspect uh, in relation to sustainability information as well. So these are uh, the topics that are covered under Part F, other assignments. And then we have Part G, which is current issues and developments. And this is something that embed that will be embedded within uh, you know, various sections of the uh, exam questions that, uh, that, that can come up in the exam. So current issues are basically the you know, latest updates in the industry. It's not just the standards, but moreover, the exposure drafts that are still in progress, uh, as well as uh, various other uh, you know, uh, revisions made to the standards as well. So just recently, there, there was a revision to the uh, professional court of ethics. Uh, for professional accountants. So this particular aspect uh, it is discussed within Part G. And uh, current issues, uh, for current issues, another additional step that we recommend our students is to always take a look at the technical articles as well. If there's a new technical article, that means that, uh, you know, that particular aspect can be tested in your uh, exam as well. So we have already covered all the, uh, you know, latest uh, technical articles still date. Uh, within the within this particular syllabus area so you know don't need to worry about that but if there is anything anything new that has come up then we will be discussing that in 
uh, you know, in the upcoming live sessions. <clears throat> and then we have part H, which is basically professional skills. And this is the you know, newly added area. So the idea is that usually we had, uh, like uh, in our 100 mark exam, we had uh, around 96 marks available as technical marks and the rest of the four marks was professional marks. That's how it used to do. For example, uh, uh, in the section E, in the 50 mark question, we used to have uh, 46 technical marks available out of the 50 and the rest of the four was professional marks. But now that's not the case. The structure has changed a bit. And now uh, we have 80 marks in total as technical marks and 20 marks as professional marks. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you how this uh, particular professional marks are embedded within the exam structure itself uh, just in just a few minutes. And finally, we have, and I can say, also say that professional skills are kind of similar to what we have in uh, SBL as well. But you know, there are a few things that you have to keep in mind or there are a few expectations uh you know that we have for the uh upcoming exam by, uh, which, are, which are set by the examiner <clears throat> finally we have part i which is employability and technology skills which is basically the skills uh, the basic skills that you need to have in, in order to attend the uh you know cbe exams that's basically all it is and uh, it's basically the knowledge regarding the CBE functionalities, uh, such as word processor or uh, spreadsheet, et cetera. And since you've already attempted a few exams, you are already familiar with that. So yeah, there's no problem in that. And that's something that we convey to our students when we you know, practice questions within the video question marathon. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we do provide with some you know, tips and tricks so that you can efficiently uh, attempt that particular question as well. Moving on to the syllabus updates, as I mentioned earlier, we have ISC 220 introduced into the syllabus, as well as ISQ M1 and ISQ M2. And secondly, we have sustainability information and uh, reporting introduced to the uh, particular syllabus as well. And this is an area that most students, uh, I would say, they would probably find this to be very difficult. I'll tell you why, because sustainability information are basically kind of similar to what we do for KPIs as well, or wh what we do when we, uh, you know, audit KPIs as well. It's, it's all in relation to non-financial aspects. It could be also in relation to non-financial aspects, such as CO2 emissions and things like that. So how do we audit these? So that's basically the challenge here. So in, when it comes to exam questions, I would say that you should be more creative when it comes to these sorts of questions, because you'll have to think out as to what all information is available to you. And if you are, let's say, an experienced professional in the industry, then obviously things can come to you. But even if you are not, this is something uh, I would say just, uh, you know, search for more questions in relation to this particular area that would be available in different resources. And we would provide you with, uh, you know, questions from such resources as well. But more and about that, uh, you know, try to identify or try to search for more uh, non-financial KPIs and how can uh, think of how we can, uh, you know, obtain an evidence for these KPIs as well, or how, uh, well, it's easy when it's, it's a calculation. For example, uh, let's say it's regarding, let's say energy usage of, an, of a factory, of a particular factory. If that is the case, then uh, energy bills, it can include, let's say electrical bills, et cetera. So we can obtain more evidence from, by looking at these sorts of supports. So that's basically uh, how you should think about it. And yeah, there could be a number of examples, but yeah, it's all dependent, dependent upon the situation there as well. <clears throat> now, so these are basically the syllabus updates. Now moving towards the exam structure now. <clears throat> so there's no increase or decrease in the timings. It's still a three hour and 15 minutes exam. And uh, we have section A and section B. In section A, we have one 50 mark case study question. But now the difference is that we, out of these 50 marks, 40 marks are technical marks and 10 marks are professional marks here. So that's the difference. And of course, uh, various uh, professional skills can be tested within these 10 marks. And in the previous uh, attempts, we used to have four professional marks, right? And how do we score those? We basically do that by, uh, you know, setting up the format, such as uh, two from date, et cetera, and then provide an introduction, conclusion, structure your answer, provide, uh, you know, good clarity, uh, provide explanations with clarity. So these are the things that we used to do. But now these sort of things can only get you maybe around one to three marks. That's basically it. But the rest of the marks is all dependent upon the, uh, the way you're answering. 
uh, that particular uh, professional skills, which we will discuss in a short while. <clears throat> and then we have section B, which has 225 marks. And out of for each 25 mark question, we have 20 technical marks and five professional marks. So that's basically how the uh, structure works in section B. So that's basically the exam structure. Moving on to the next aspect, that is time allocation. So now we can just uh, you know adjust the time allocation a slight bit. So this is basically just my recommendation. So when you were attempting your you know previous uh, exams, did you face any issue with the time? If you can let me know about that. Yeah, I face it every time. Actually, usually I'm, I won't be able to. Um, look, time paper completion is a challenge for me always. But uh, uh -huh. I've improved. Like uh, SBL, I uh, attempted eighty marks this time mm -hmm. uh, versus uh, fifty marks last time. So okay, yeah. Okay, that's that's great. So with practice, you should be able to you know improve yeah. these things. That's fine. <clears throat> So just to give you uh, an idea regarding, yeah, you're saying that? How is the audit paper like? Is it very lengthy? Uh, like other papers or? Uh, not as lengthy language? as SBL, I can tell you that. <laughs> okay. It's I not as it. lengthy as uh, SBL, but for the upcoming attempt, the I would say that the focus should be on uh, more on structuring your answer as well. Don't don't lose focus on the technical marks. That's still necessary. And even the mm -hmm. Uh, questions that you have available in the current question video marathon that's still relevant because okay. those those videos can help you understand how to score the technical marks so it's still relevant there and even your let's say outdated exam kits so all those things are relevant but our focus now should also be in how we present the answer as well for example if we are let's say attempting uh yeah let's say an audit risk question so usually what we usually do is we just read the scenario, and sometimes we even speculate some, uh, you know, what can go wrong in our answer. But the problem uh, or the, the, the uh, method that we should use now should be, uh, well, it should be presented in this way. So now we have to prioritize the most significant risk first. That's basically the approach that we should take uh, in the upcoming exam. So that's basically, uh, there's just minor differences so that we can score the professional marks. That's basically it. And of course, we will be discussing uh, such questions in the upcoming sessions as well for your better understanding. <clears throat> and then we have section A, which has fifty mark, which is which has the fifty mark question. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the you know uh, timings into two phases: reading and planning, as well as writing. So for this fifty mark question, we can only take a total of an hour and thirty minutes. So that's basically something that we should strictly follow, nothing more. Because I have, uh, you know, heard from students who what did uh, what happened is that they just uh, you know take more than one and a half hours, but and ended up you know losing out marks on the last question, so things like that. So just strictly follow this time strategy. For section A, we have twenty five minutes, and uh, we should we should allocate this twenty five minutes to reading and planning. Reading and planning includes reading the requirements, reading the scenario, and, and planning a structure for your answer. And planning a structure for your answer should, you know, take a bit more time as well, because, you know, that, that is really necessary for you to score the professional marks as well. Just take some time to think of a structure for your answer. And, of course, prioritizing audit risk, et cetera, all comes under this particular uh, timing. And after 25 minutes, you can write your answer in an hour and five minutes. That's basically how the structure works now. And when it comes to section B, for each 25 mark question, take eight minutes for reading and planning, and then 37 minutes for writing your answer. So that's basically as to what the time strategy is. The reason why I told you this particular time strategy at this point in time is so that when you practice questions, you can you know, adopt this time strategy as well, just so that you get, you're a bit more compatible with it. That's something that I would recommend. What else? <clears throat> and then let's take a look at the professional skills now. So for AAA, we have four professional skills to focus on. The first one is communication skill. And speaking uh, about communication skill, the primary focus here is on the clarity of your answer. It's not about your spelling on grammar here, but more about uh, have you conveyed what you were intending to convey. That's basically as to what the communication skill is all about. And secondly, we have analysis and evaluation. 
and analysis and evaluation is kind of something that we you know normally do in any any and every paper as well we just uh, you know analyze the information that we obtain and point out the positives as well as negatives here so that's basically uh, what analysis and evaluation is and what else yeah professional skepticism and judgment now this is a really uh, curious area because uh, the idea regarding professional skepticism is that obviously we don't uh, we don't completely rely or we don't 100% rely on all the information that has been provided to us that's basically the idea here we we will have to challenge some of the information we will we'll have to question the management regarding you know a few things that they have provided or that they have stated etc so that's basically as to what professional skepticism is and you will have to exercise judgment now this judgment is where uh, where the uh, you know as I stated earlier, you have to prioritize the audit risk and things like that, right? So that's where the judgment comes in. What is the significant risk? What is the insignificant risk? How do you prioritize? So all these, uh, so judgment is basically demonstrated in these areas. And finally, there is commercial acumen. And this is, uh, I would say there is, uh, well, in, usually in AAA exams, you can also be asked to state business risks as well. Uh, which is basically, you know, uh, risks that are relevant to the organization, it's going concern status, etc. That's basically what it is. So when providing answers to such question, are you helping the organization develop? Are you, uh, are you able to increase their profitability or uh, are you able to enable their, you know, continuous functioning? These are the things that they focus on when they talk about commercial acumen. So that's a really necessary skill that you need to have when, when it comes to uh, you know, recommending, let's say, business risk, etc., or pointing out business risk, etc. So that's basically it. So these are the professional skills that can be tested in your upcoming exam. And I hope you got a brief idea as to what it is. And of course, we will be, you know, practicing questions so that, you know, I can show you how to, or I can demonstrate how to, you know, incorporate these professional skills in the answers as well. <clears throat> now, moving on. So this is just a plan of attack, or I would say, you know, it's all about how to prepare for your exam. That's basically it. It's, it's, a, it's a simple step-by-step -step process. Step one is to learn the syllabus. And when I say learn the syllabus, I mean learn 100% of the syllabus. Don't miss out on anything or try, don't try to, you know, predict the question that can come up and just learn that. Uh, just avoid doing that. Just learn everything within the syllabus and continuously revise this as well. Because if you learn it once and, you know, practice questions and then, uh, you know, when you go back, uh, when you enter the exam hall, you might, you know, forget a few concepts, right? So continuous revision is really necessary. And when I say revise, revise on a daily basis. Take uh, maybe an hour or an hour and a half on a daily basis to just revise through the syllabus continuously. That's really necessary. And step two is to practice, practice, and practice. Practice as much questions as you can. And yeah, of course, a common question that I usually get is, is the question marathon enough or is the revision kits enough? So I would say just, uh, your primary resources should be the video question marathon as well as the uh, you know various exam kits that that is available to you. No study text. I don't think uh, you know the study text would be that useful to you guys because uh, you know it's just a waste of time. There there are too much content in it, and I've already you know uh, taken the essence out of those study texts and created the notes for you. So yeah, that's that's totally enough. And for the updates, we can you know definitely discuss it in various sessions. So don't worry about that. Just focus on the video question marathon as well as the, uh, you know, uh, exam kits that's available to you. And just, you know, just focus on one exam kit that's enough because usually both the exam kits have some common questions. So it will be a waste of money. So, yeah, just focus on one. Uh, that's basically as to what the practice, practice and practice aspect is. And once you're done practicing, then do it again if possible. And uh, another additional tip that I'd like to provide you here is that Whenever you are practicing questions, there is a chance that you might be able to learn something new or learn a new way of answering. So in those instances, just make a note of what you've learned. That's something that's, uh, that I would really recommend as well. <clears throat> and moving on to the next aspect that is past paper questions. So past paper questions are yet again something uh, that's really crucial. And it's a really, uh, I would say, 
uh, really useful resource when it comes to practicing for the exams, right? So I'm talking about, uh, you know, all the past papers that are available within the ACC's website, practice everything, uh, you know, and when it comes to past papers, I would suggest, you know, practicing these close to the exam or uh, uh, about a week or two close to the exam. That's that would basically help you get a feeler and you would be prepared to tackle such level of questions as well. So yeah, by that, that time, yeah. <clears throat> Moving on. And I see we have an additional participant here, Naveen. Naveen, am I audible to you? Okay, so uh, let's just continue. Just uh, let me know if you have any questions, Naveen. The chat box is always open in case you have some issue with your microphone. So yeah, moving on. <clears throat> After step three, we have step four, which is reading the examiner's report. Now, this is uh, a phase that some students skip out on, but I would say that it's a really useful resource when it comes to understanding what the strong candidates do in the exam, as well as what the poor candidates do in the exam. So whenever you are attempting a past paper, there would always be a, a, you know, an examiner's report in relation to that paper. So reading that can also give you an idea as to uh, what is expected from you uh, by the examiner. So yeah, reading that should also be within your plan. And then uh, I would move on to step five, which is to do a mock exam. And we do provide mock exams to our students around uh, for the September session. It would be, you know, on the second half of August. Uh, we would try to, you know, do it as early as possible because, you know, once we are able to identify the room for improvement in you guys, so we can communicate it to you as soon as possible and you can, you know, make the uh, rem uh, remedy, uh, take the remedial action for that. So uh, you can, uh, you will be provided with, uh, uh, with some questions and you can just answer, uh, answer them and send it to me. And I will personally review them and provide you with the feedback as to, you know, what are the your areas of improvement? How can you improve an answer, et cetera? And that's really crucial when it comes to uh, the September exam as well, just to let you know. <clears throat> And finally, the final step is just to go attend your exam because once you've done all the above steps, you are ready to attempt the uh, exam, AAA exam itself. And uh, there's also another practice that I'm planning to introduce for the upcoming sessions. And uh, in this practice, what we're going to do is, and this is something that I'm planning to do around in the month of August, because by then you would be, uh, you know, you would have completed all your syllabus and learning aspect, right? So. During those phase, what I'm uh, planning to do is I'm just gonna, you know, give you a, a question to do, uh, you know, uh, depend, uh, it, it all, uh, yeah, the, a question, you can attempt that put a question whenever you want, but after attempting the question, you just send it back to me so, just so that, you know, I can understand as to whether you have uh, improved upon the professional skills or the structure of your answer, et cetera. That's basically, it. that's another practice that I'm planning to introduce. <clears throat> So by I would say August, uh, I would it, it would be great if you can you know finish off all the uh, finish off watching all the uh, you know video lectures as well as practicing questions as well if possible. Otherwise, yeah, we can you know think of a plan for that as well. I will uh, guide you as to how to plan for your uh, exam uh, in the next aspect. <clears throat> One second. <clears throat> So how to plan for your upcoming exam is basically something that uh, we're gonna discuss now. But before that, do you have any questions till now? Uh, so one question. Uh, yeah. So I saw in the, in session one, you discussed that there are uh, various standards, uh, auditing mm -hmm. standards, along with that some additional standards, whether like quality control, engagement standards, so mm -hmm. how we are supposed to approach those like uh, in uh, CA there were like there wasn't much detail each and every side so how was it mm -hmm. in triple A okay okay so uh, in triple or in I would say uh, the IFR is as well as the uh, you know ISA standards that we have are all just guidelines that we have to uh, use during our day-to-day -day practice. That's basically all it is. So you don't have to like memorize all the standard numbers or names when it comes to if you if you have if you know about those things for the accounting standards, that's fine. Uh, but 
for auditing standards, you don't have to, you know, remember all the numbers or names there. It's all about the content. You just have to understand as to, uh, you know, what, what the content is all about. That's basically all that's going to be tested in the exam. <clears throat> they don't, they don't mind if you don't know the, you know, uh, standard number or names or anything like that. And I can tell you that the names are quite lengthier than what I've provided to you in that. Uh, yeah, I believe uh, there is a list in session two, one or two, right? So that particular, those are like the names. So you don't have to buy heart anything. And I don't think you have to buy heart any of the, uh, you know, definitions or anything like that, that has been provided to you in the notes as well. As long as you can understand the concept, that's enough. That's just enough. Because in the exam, you won't be, you know, asked of the definitions, but rather uh, you'll have to apply that concept or apply that uh, approach or methodology in the exam. That's basically all it is. And you'll able to, you will be able to understand that once you practice a few questions as well. <clears throat> Any other question? Naveen, anything from your side? Okay, so is my screen visible? Akansha? Yes, yes. Okay. <clears throat> So this is basically the time that we have left for your upcoming September exam. And your exam is on the 5th of September, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to do something known as backward planning. So backward planning, well, I came up with the name myself. I should have, you know, uh, gone with a better name, I guess. So uh, what is this backward planning? Let me explain that. So when we talk, look at you know businesses and various other corporates that we have, so what do what do they do in their daily lives? They basically do their day to day activities just to achieve some objectives, right? So how do they plan for these objectives? Well, let's talk about that. The first thing that they do is, and pretty sure you already learned this in SBL as well. The first thing that they do is they set an objective, right? And after that, they uh, set up a strategy to achieve that objective. And this course of action can be a long-term plan, a medium-term plan, or even a short-term plan or day-to-day -day plans as well, right? That's basically how they uh, plan as to what to do next, right? So that's exactly the approach that we adopt uh, for planning for this exam as well. Our objective here is basically to attend the exam in September. And we already know as to what all things should be included to prepare for the exam as well. We just looked at that, right? So let's plan for this, shall we? On 5th of September, I will be attempting my exam. And in order to be prepared for that, I should have uh, you know, practiced all the past paper questions and should have read through all the examiner's report as well, right? So I'm just gonna, let's say, uh, take this week's. Okay. So I'm gonna allocate these weeks for practicing all the past papers. I don't know how many past papers are available at the moment. So you can take a look at that if you want. But yeah, these days are allocated to doing the past papers. <clears throat> and after that, sorry, I would say before that, before doing the past papers, I should be, uh, you know, I should be practicing all the exam kits and all the video question marathons, etc. Right. So I'm just going to take, let's say, till the first of August to do that. Just, uh, you know, are providing a rough plan here. It can be different, can be a different date depending upon your day to day work responsibilities as well as your, uh, you know, any family responsibilities that you may have as well. It, it can all uh, change uh, depending upon that. Just, this is just to give you an idea. And then, uh, you know, in order for me to practice the questions, I would obviously have to learn the syllabus, right? So learning the syllabus can, well, I can just allocate the entire July to learn that. So this is how you should plan. Just plan from your objective, uh, you know, back to what all things that you need to do on a step-by-step -step basis. That's basically it. And of course, uh, during this time period, one of these days, uh, you you should be you can expect to have the mock exam as well. So yeah, <clears throat> so yeah, that's basically all I wanted to cover in this particular session. Do you have any questions? Uh, no. no, nothing from your side, right? So, uh, Naveen, 
perhaps if you have any question, you can either shoot in the chat box or. Okay, so I have a question. Why? What is your name? Only have one A. Usually, Akancha has two A's, right? No. No. I think okay. It's... No. <laughs> okay, I used to have a senior, uh, you know, call Akancha, and he used to have like, you know, two A's. I you mean starting letters? Uh, yeah, starting letters. A A K A N S S A. No. Okay, I was just uh, curious to know that. Okay. Uh, okay. And yeah, I was saying that, uh, okay, I, I've actually forgot my question. Give me a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what is your current status? Like uh, how many sessions have you watched and when are you planning to complete? Uh, I'm planning to complete in the July itself. So I've been only mm -hmm. for my first session. Okay. So okay. Mostly I study. Yeah, no worries. Weekend. That's fine. Yeah. Right. How much time can you, uh, you know, and where do you work, if I may know? Yeah, I work in Assessor Prudential Life Insurance Company. Okay. As a? As a uh, manager. I'm a manager mm -hmm. in fund accounting okay. profile. Okay. Okay. That's great. Yeah, fund yeah. accounting. That's a really interesting issue. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to know, also wanted to know that, uh, you know, if you are, let's say, uh, starting with session one, then it would be great if you can, you know, try to finish this as soon as possible in July and get started with the question yeah. practice. Is, is it just the AAA paper or are you also attending any other? Oh, uh, no, it's just this. Like, this. Uh, okay. what, what are you intending to ask exactly? Uh, no, I, I'm just, uh, you know, asking if you are attempting more than one paper or not, that's basically. I was planning, but I don't think I would be able to manage. Uh, that's why okay. I asked you if, I, if I could get recorded lectures, so I would finish okay. triple A quickly and then start with that. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's all the recorded sessions anyway, so you can just uh, you know watch it according to your flexibility. And yeah. I also wanted to know uh, how much time you can devote on weekdays and weekends as well, if I may know that, to learning, of course. Okay. So mostly eight to nine hours uh, Saturday and eight to nine hours Sunday. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, okay. On on uh, you know, working days. Oh, uh, hardly one hour maybe. Thoda hardly hectic one hour. Days. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's understandable. So I would say just uh, you know, if you even if you get one hour on a working mm -hmm. day on a working day, I would try to utilize those for the revision purposes. So, yeah. yeah. You know, just my recommendation. And on uh, you know, we can we can try to use as much time as possible and try to complete. I know as much content as possible and when you are you know watching the video lectures i don't know uh, what's your study method or anything but if you want to like create your own notes because some students prefer that you can also do that mm -hmm. as well and but you know just uh, just to let you know we have already covered everything within the notes itself so you won't necessarily have to refer to any study text that would be you know quite inefficient to be honest yeah. And uh, if you have any sort of questions, you can just, uh, you know, ask me at any time, any day. That's that's uh, fine. I would, you know, revert to it as soon as possible. I say as soon as possible, but still it could be maybe one or two days delayed. So, yeah, even if I read the message, it might take, you know, one or two days. Delayed. Yeah, right. Okay, so if that would be all, then we can wind up the session and I'll see you in the next session. And I believe that there would be more students in the next session is because uh, it's early June. So we have students coming up in July and even August as well. So yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So uh, thank you and I will see you in the next session. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. Bye.